Good morning students. We are discussing on the rigid pavement and our today's topic of discussion that is joints in the rigid pavement. We have already earlier discussed that in the rigid pavement we have to provide the extra joints to the structure so that it can give strength and variability and the flexibility to that particular pavement. Okay. So before starting the detailed discussion, let me tell you what is joint and why we require the joints. Okay. So starting with what is joint. Now joints are the discontinuities in the concrete pavement slab and it helps to release the stresses due to temperature variation, the moisture variation and the shrinkage of concrete. Now uh, let me tell you why we required joints and if we provide the joints how it will help us. So talking about the necessity of the joints the first is the expansion, contraction and warping of concrete slab that resulting from the temperature and the moisture changes okay so if you provide joints it will allow this expansion this contraction and the warping in the particular slab and it is safe with the safe criteria by providing the proper safety or without harming the structure the joints allow this flexibility to the pavement. The second is to facilitate a break line in the construction at the end of the work or if any unexpected interruption to the work progress. Whenever you are constructing uh, any structure, there might be possibility that there is an unexpected interruption occur. Okay, so at that time and at the end of the day when you have to stop the construction at that particular stage you have to uh, give a provision that in the next day or uh, after resuming the work you can start it with the same specification and with the continuity okay so for that you must need to provide the joints the third necessity is that to construct the pavement in lanes of convenient width. Now, these joints are purposefully provided in the rigid pavement surface. All types of joints are used in the rigid pavement construction for the Portland cement concrete structure. Okay, joints shall be constructed that depending upon their functional requirement, the location of the joints should be transferred accurately at the site and it should be cut as per the dimension. Whenever uh, you start the work at site, you will have a map and in that particular map or plan, you uh, are given with the accurate locations of that particular joints. Okay, so first of all, you have to uh, transfer that joints at accurate distance and accurate point and then after if there is any extra length of joints you found then you have to cut that extra length or extra width of that joint okay it shall be ensured that the required depth of cut is made from the edge to edge of the pavement so whatever the width of your pavement or whatever the width you are given in the specification okay that should be ensured when you are whenever you are constructing the pavement now joints in pavement and the drilling concrete shall be staggered so that they are not coincide vertically and it should be kept apart 300 to 400 millimeter so that it will not go inside in the pavement okay showing of joints or we can say the cutting of the joint shall be carried out with a diamond studded blade after the 
concrete has hardened previously we have talked that uh, we have to cut the extra width or extra length of the joint okay so that should be performed with the diamond studded blade and it should be performed only and only after your concrete slab get its proper hardness so that if the concrete has hardened enough so that it will take the load of showing machine as well as that stress that you apply on that particular structure okay and whenever you are performing this process you have to ensure that no any damage is occurred in the pavement texture as well as the crew member who is working on this process okay now this showing operation now this showing operation would start early as 4 to 8 hours after laying of concrete and should not later than 8 to 12 hours okay so if you want to start this cutting process or showing showing process okay so at the earlier that if you want to do it as fast as possible then you have the time of 4 to 8 hours and if you want to uh, allow it to get age so for that you have the maximum hour lap is 8 to 4 8 to 12 hours okay joints can be formed in two different ways the contraction joints are most often showed in the pcc placements okay and if you talk about the other joints such as the expansion or isolation or the construction joints okay those are created by form work before the pcc is placed so only and only contraction joints are the joints who are applied after the pcc placement okay now each one now each one of this method of joint construction has its own method and its own methodology and set of the considerations so now let's talk on that which are the types of joints we provide in the rigid pavement there are basically two types of joints the first is the transverse joint and the longitudinal joints and the transverse joints have few different core types those are the contraction joints construction joints and the expansion joints so let's talk on the transverse joints the joints which are provided in the transverse direction or the perpendicular to the center line of the road are generally known as the transverse joint according to the function of joints transverse joints are classified into the expansion contraction and construction joints we'll start with the first one that is the contraction joints the contraction joints regulate the location of the cracking that caused by dimensional changes in the slab unregulated cracks can grow and result in an unacceptably rough surface as well as water infiltrates into the base or the other layers of the pavement which can enable other types of pavement to get distress now the contraction joints are the most common type of joints in the concrete pavement structure thus the generic terms joint generally refers to as the contraction joints if you address a joint term in the pavement construction that generally uh, people consider it as a contraction joint the contraction joints are provided along the transverse direction to take care of the contraction of concrete slab due to the natural shrinkage and to permit the contraction of the slab due to falling temperature so for the shrinkage purpose and to come over from the falling temperature problems generally we provide the contraction joints these joints are spaced closer than expansion joints load transfer at the joints is provided through the physical interlocking by the aggregates 
the projecting out from the joint faces. As per the IRC specification, the maximum spacing of the contraction joints in the reinforced cement concrete slab is capped 4.5 meter. And in the reinforced slab, the thickness of 20 centimeter is 14 meter. So if the reinforcement slab and it is having the thickness of 20 centimeter, so at that time the spacing is generally kept as a 14 meter. And if the slab is unreinforced, unreinforced cement, then this spacing are 4.5 meter. The contraction joint is already shown in the figure. So this direction and this joint is known as the contraction joints. Now the next is the construction joint. The construction joints are generally provided whenever the construction work stops temporarily at the end of the day or it gets suspended for more than 30 minutes. So at such time or at such stages we have to provide the construction joints. If the road construction stops or discontinues or discontinued at the transverse expansion or the contraction joints, there will be no need for providing the construction joints. But if you have stopped the construction at the stage or at the middle of the slab, so there you must have to provide the construction joint. If the sufficient concrete has not been mixed to form a slab that extending up to a contraction joint and if an interruption occur that place concrete shall be removed up to the last proceeding joints and the joint direction could be either along the transverse or the longitudinal direction the longitudinal construction joints also allow the slab warping these joints shall be provided at the location of the contraction joints using the dowel bars Okay, generally the workers manually insert this dowel bar at the construction joints. So the construction joints should be planned so that they coincide with the contraction joint that spacing to eliminate the extra joints in the pavement structure. The next is expansion joints. Expansion joints are provided along the transverse direction to allow the movement of the concrete slab due to the temperature and the subgrade moisture variation. So when the temperature of the pavement increases, the slab expands and if there is no provision for such free spaces or the gap for such expansion, that slab will subject it to the compressive stresses. And sometimes it may also possible that it cause the upward buckling. So by providing such spaces, by providing such gap and expansion joints that will relieve the stresses that is coming because of the temperature variation. The gap is maintained by being filled up with a compressible material and sealing at the surface with a flexible shilling compound. As this joints opening is usually kept as a 20 millimeter, there is no aggregate interlock and hence a load transfer device becomes necessary. So that's why sometimes we provide the wheels bar in the expansion joints. So this expansion joint also permit the contraction and warping of the slab. So this is what about the expansion joint. Now next is the longitudinal joints. A longitudinal joint is required in all pavements that are wider than 16 feet. If two adjacent lanes are poured at the same time, a longitudinal joint is shown. That means it should be cut. Okay. Now tie bars sometimes used 
or else whenever the required the tie bars are placed perpendicular to the longitudinal joints and the parallel to the particular grade or the gradient tie bars may be machine placed during the paving or the secured with the chairs prior to the paving band bars are used and band bars are the tie bars at a 60 degree angles sometimes longitudinal joints require the use of a keyway with no tie bars so at that time the keyways may be trapezoidal or the semicircular in shape they are used when an adjacent pavement is expected to move independently and the two different pavements cannot be tied together the keyway prevents any differential settlement of either of the pavement so this is all about the joints we provide in the rigid pavements i hope students you understand the concept of providing the joints in the rigid pavements we have mainly two different type of joints first transverse and the longitudinal joint and in the transverse joint we have three different types of joints as per the functionality of transverse joints and that is expansion contraction and the construction joint thank you so much students for your kind attention